Hi, and thanks for watching this talk on Spatial Algorithms at Scale with Spatial Pandas. My name is Adam Lewis, and I'm currently a Data Science Fellow at Quonsite. And I prepared this work with Darhas, Director of Consulting, and Kim Pevy, Software Engineer at Quonsite. Over the last several months, I have, along with Darhas, Kim, and others, explored solutions to efficiently spatially filter a trillion rows of geospatial data, stores it as flat files, for localized queries. So say you have geospatial data from all over the world or all over a country in this case, and you want to quickly filter out data in a single state, a zip code, or thousands of zip codes. How do you do that? Well, we'll show you a few different solutions and we'll look at the computational costs uh, between them in this presentation. We'll use a surrogate data set uh, for this work, and it's OpenStreetMaps GPS data collected from thousands of volunteers uh, from June 2012. So we're going to use a subset of the data located in the contiguous US, which is about 114 million rows and 3.2 gigabytes uh, uncompressed CSV file. So it's a bit smaller than the trillion rows mentioned, but uh, these uh, principles and what we're going to show you here do scale up to much larger data sets. So what are some of the difficulties in this task? Well, first, the data is too large to fit in memory. You can't read it into pandas or you'll uh, run out of memory. Additionally, we talked about wanting localized queries. Uh, a naive approach touches every data point during the search. Uh, but you're going to have to read all of that data from disk. And then you're also going to have to find if every single point is within whatever polygon region you're trying to filter out. Here's how we solve those issues. Instead of storing the data in a single monolithic CSV file, we can store the data in some file format, which allows us to save the single large file as multiple smaller binary files. This solves the problem of the data being too big to fit in memory because we can now access just the individual parts of the data set. We can then sort the data set so that points that are spatially near each other are actually stored in the same file. We then build a global index so that when we run our localized queries, only relevant files uh, need to be loaded based on the region that we're querying. And then uh, we can further speed up the process by uh, reading and processing those individual partitions in parallel. So let's dig deeper on the spatial sorting step. Essentially, what you're doing is converting a two-dimensional space, latitude-longitude space, into a 1D space. And this 1D space uh, needs to have the property that points that are near each other in a sorted 1D space are also near each other in the two-dimensional space. There's a few established options uh, in order to do that. There's uh, geohashing, Hilbert Space Filling Curves, Google S2, and Uber H3. We're going to focus on these first two, uh, which is uh, what was used in this work. So what is a geohash? Well, a geohash is defined by a string of characters uh, and each string of characters represents an area on the surface of the Earth. So we could have uh, the geohash G, and it represents uh, that area there. And what happens is we can add additional characters to the geohash and define a smaller and smaller area uh, on the surface of the Earth. So that is geohash G, and then the geohash GK, is this even smaller region contained in geohash G. And then we can keep adding uh, characters and get a smaller and smaller area defined on the surface of the Earth. And we can add characters arbitrarily to get arbitrarily small regions. So geohashing, uh, after you calculate the geohash and then sort it, that is essentially spatially sorting your data because you've mapped your latitude longitude space into uh, geohash space, which can then be sorted, and then points that are near each other in the sorted geohash space are going to be near each other in latitude-longitude space as well. 
So one of the methods that we are going to look at, uh, the spatial pandas library uses a different type of sorting. It uses a Hilbert curve. So this is an example of a Hilbert curve. You can see that uh, it fills this uh, latitude longitude region. It fills it with this curve and it starts in the bottom left and it ends in the bottom right. What we can do is we can map our points in latitude longitude space onto this curve. And then we can define each point by simply the distance that it lies along this curve. And again, that is spatially sorting the data because we've converted our latitude longitude space into a distance, a single number, a single dimension, uh, a distance along the curve. And if two points are near each other on this Hilbert space, they are also near each other in the latitude longitude space. So let's talk about the tech stack that we're using to accomplish each of these steps in our solution. First, to convert a single monolithic file into many small binary partitions, we're using the Parquet file format. And then to spatially sort our data, uh, we are using, we're looking at a variety of methods. And so some of the methods use uh, GeoHash, and we're using Python GeoHash to calculate that, and then Dask to sort those GeoHashes. Or alternatively, we're using spatial pandas uh, to spatially sort the data with the use of the Hilbert curve. And then after we've spatially sorted the data, we can ac access just uh, the parts of the data that are we are concerned with for our localized query, and then we can process them in parallel, and those are accomplished by Dask. And then after we've accessed just the right parts of the data, we can uh, spatially filter the data with uh, GeoPandas or Spatial Pandas' sjoin method. They each have their own, which tells you whether points are within uh, a polygon or a set of polygons. So here are the machine specs that we use in this benchmark. We have a 24 core Threadripper processor with 64 gigs of RAM. And it is a shared system, but we are confident that our results are representative. For this comparison, we further limit the computational power uh, with Dask. And so we limited ourselves to four Dask workers, each with two threads per worker and three gigs of RAM per worker. And the final computation in each of the cases that we'll show brings the filtered data back into the main process. So the data set that we'll be using is the OpenStreetMaps unsorted contiguous US data set that we showed earlier. And then for each of the cases that I'll present, uh, it, we will pre-process the data and query the data. So we pre-process the data if necessary, we then sort the data, and then we select points from the data set that are within 1, 10, 100, 1,000, or 10,000 random zip code polygons from around the US. First, let's look at the unsorted approach. Uh, so there's no pre-processing or sorting necessary. Uh, and then to spatially index into the data, we have to read in every bit of the data, and then we apply GeoPandas' spatial join method of each partition of the GPS data. And again, that spatial join method tells us uh, which points are within the set of polygons uh, that are zip codes in this case. Here we can see the results of the unsorted case, uh, starting with 114 million points. Uh, there was no geohash uh, necessary to be computed, no sort time, uh, but it took 41 minutes to find all the points that were within a single polygon, 41 minutes to find all the points within 10 polygons, 47 minutes to find all the points within 100 polygons. And this is the number of result points. And I'll just mention that all of our results were consistent across the various cases. Um, with the ex one exception, which I'll, I'll clearly mention later. I also want to point out that uh, the unsorted case, we didn't have enough memory to process the uh, 1,000 or 10,000 polygons. Um, the spatial join uh, used uh, more memory than it was available, and uh, it wasn't possible to, to complete the query on those. So here is the second case uh, that we looked at. It's a, using a sorted geohash. So in this case, 
Uh, we pre-processed the data by computing a geohash, and we used a four-character geohash in this case because four-character geohash is about the size of the zip codes that we are filtering by. You could use a uh, higher precision or, or lower precision geohash. Um, we don't guarantee that this is the best one to use, but it is reasonable because it's about the size of the polygons that we're filtering out. So there are trade-offs. If you use a more precise geohash, you're gonna get an increased geohash calculation time and uh, reduced uh, spatial join time. So the exact uh, geohash precision to use could vary from case to case. After pre-processing the data, we sort it and we just sort that geohash lexicographically using Dask, and then we spatially index it into the data. So we have all our data and each data point has a geohash associated with it, uh, but to know which geohashes we're interested in, we have to calculate the geohashes for the polygon in the query. And then we index into the data by looking up the data with those geohashes. And because we have sorted by the geohashes, we only need to read the partitions of the data in those geohashes. And then we apply GeoPandas's spatial join method on each of the resulting partition of points. Now I'm going to present these results with uh, a very similar case, and it's just slightly different. Uh, we're just not going to apply this last spatial join uh, from GeoPandas on uh, the resulting partitions. And we're just going to return the, the, the data from uh, with the matching polygon geohash. And now uh, to kind of give a little bit more detail on uh, what these differences are going to be. Um, let's say we have this uh, polygon here and we want the data points uh, from within the polygon, these uh, light blue points. Well, what we are doing when we are uh, calculating the geohashes for each polygon, we are calculating these pink regions, these pink geohash regions. It looks like this polygon intersects two four-digit geohashes. And uh, we, when we index into the data by those geohashes, we return all the data within these geohashes, which is all this dark blue data. And then if we are interested in just the data within the polygon, we have to perform the spatial join method, which reduces these dark blue points down to just these light blue points, which actually lie within the polygon. So I'm going to be showing you with, with the last spatial join and without the last spatial join. And so the without the spatial last spatial join, it's not quite as accurate, uh, but it may be appropriate based on your particular application. So here are the results from each of those cases. Uh, these cases shared the pre-processing and sorting steps, uh, which are one-time costs. So it took 27 and three minutes for those steps respectively. And then uh, the query time with the last spatial join uh, was under a minute for one in 10 polygons and rising up to 27 minutes for a thousand uh, polygons. And you'll notice that those times are uh, quite a bit greater than at high numbers of polygons than if you can leave out that last spatial join where your query times uh, remain under a single minute. However, if we look at the number of result points, the number of points that we end up with, uh, the number of results in this case are more than 20 times uh, the number that we get if we do perform that last spatial join. So it's not quite as accurate in this case. Uh, again, it may or may not be appropriate based on your particular uh, use case. So uh, the last case that we're going to look at is spatial pandas, uh, spatially sorted case. Uh, there's no pre-processing of the data necessary and that there's, we don't need to calculate a geohash. We do sort the data and uh, we use the Hilbert curve that we explained earlier. And uh, then we spatially index into the data using spatial pandas' spatial join method and it's parallelized with Dask. Here are the results of that. And uh, we, these times are actually in seconds rather than minutes. 
uh, because these times are quite a bit faster. And so to sort uh, the 114 million rows took just over a minute and the query times were all under a minute as well. And uh, the number of result points was identical to the unsorted and the sorted geohash with spatial join case here. Let's take a look at some plots to compare the results. This plot shows the query time, so not including the geohash calculation time or the sort time, versus the number of polygons for these various uh, algorithms that we've tried. And so uh, this is a log-log plot so that we could fit everything on, on a single plot. And we see that the unsorted case uh, takes uh, the most time and uh, <clears throat> we can see also that the sorted geohash with without spatial join, it uh, is slightly faster than spatial pandas. But again, that was the case that was not as accurate as the spatial pandas case. Um, it, once you add that spatial join back in, uh, your times uh, start to rise again with the sorted geohash. So that plot didn't include any pre-processing or sorting time. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Of course, with the unsorted case, we don't pre-process the data. We just go directly into accessing uh, the data. And so it has a, a zero uh, pre-process time. And then the sorted geohash with and without spatial join, they have the exact same pre-processing steps. Uh, it takes over 25 minutes to calculate the geohash and then a few additional minutes to sort that geohash. Whereas with the spatial panda spatially sorted approach, uh, it just takes uh, less than about two minutes to spatially sort uh, the data using the Hilbert uh, curve. So this is the last plot that I wanna present. It's the uh, total time versus the number of polygons for various algorithms. It's no longer a log-log plot, this y-axis is not a log uh, scale, although the number of polygons still is. And uh, we can see that once uh, we factor in the sort time, which is what the total time is, it factors in the sort time and the geohash calculation time and the query time. Uh, if we want to filter out any number of polygons, uh, spatial pandas is the, the fastest approach in this case. Additionally, sorting the ge with uh, the geohash without this last spatial join um, it seems to scale better with the number of polygons. However, it does produce results that aren't as accurate as with the spatial join. So spatial pandas was the fastest solution that we tested. Has some advantages in that it's a pure Python package implemented uh, using a lot of Numba, so it's very fast. Integrated well with Desk Data Frame and Parquet. Um, and it's uh, very efficient uh, in, in what it does. It does have some disadvantages as well in that it's a very young project, small community and low development activity uh, at the moment. Thank you for listening to this talk. Uh, we want to acknowledge the contributions of John Meese in developing Spatial Pandas and the rest of the Hall of His team. Also, we want to thank uh, GeoPandas and Dask for creating these tools which uh, allow us to do the work that we've seen today. Thank you and we look forward to your questions.